Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. My name is Claudia and this is my wonderful, amazing husband, Hello, Brian. And over on Instagram, if you're not following us on Instagram, we'll put our Instagrams right here and you can follow us. Um, on Instagram, I told you guys to ask me some questions, relationship questions, and marriage questions, and we decided to sit down and film a video answering the questions that you guys asked me. So just for future references, all the questions that you guys will ever ask me, like on Instagram or whatever, if I ever post a video on it, they're always going to be anonymous. I just decided that's better so people aren't scared to ask something. So all these questions are anonymous and I'll just, we'll just read out the questions and then answer them. So let's get started. Okay, so first question is, what was the biggest thing to work through in your first year of marriage? Getting Claudia to trust me um, because we come from like an independent um, you know, state being single, like we kind of get to do whatever we want, whenever we want, and kind of the decisions we make are our own and like... Affect it, just us. Exactly. Yeah. So like the moment when we became married, like I biblically became like the head of the house and like have to lead the family and stuff. So um, it was kind of hard getting her to kind of trust me, you know, like her ideas, my ideas, and kind of put them together, unite them, and to kind of come to a common ground where she's like, okay, um, I see your point of view. Um, I trust that it is from God. I believe that God is going to use you to lead our family in this. That building the trust, I can say, mm -hmm. was my, my biggest thing for my part. Thing for me was definitely to get Brian to open up and like share his feelings. As, as women, we're very like, we share what we're going through and what we're feeling. If I have a low day, you know it. If I have a good day, like you know it. Um, so getting Brian to share what he's feeling and what he's thinking. So communication was a really big thing for us to work through. The next question is, what is the right way to interact with guys? So from a guy's viewpoint, what do you think? Um, from my uh, personal experience and also from like from a guy's standpoint, would have to be for if you are a girl, um, not to come off so strong to the guy. Like the first time meeting the person, being like, hey, I love you, like I really like you, like I want to marry you, stuff like that. That kind of turns off the guy already. Uh, we know that girls are uh, like emotional and you know they, they like to speak their, their feelings. But um, the guy really wants to get to know the girl like for who they are first and fall in love with that person um, instead of like kind of feeling obligating or like pressured um, to start liking you and start dating you and kind of getting to know you. So like if you wait and you, you allow time to kind of uh, show who you really are to that person. I think they'll fall in love with who you actually are, you know, so yeah I don't know what what your thoughts are. Um, the right way to interact with guys it depends on what relationship you have with the guy You're talking about like if they're your friend if they're a potential boyfriend or if they're a potential husband Like depends on your relationship, but I think like overall with all guys I think that a woman needs to um, interact very gracefully and very godly you know, like Brian said, not come off too strong, not like pressure that person into like loving you or whatever. Just being yourself, being kind, you know, but um, not too flirtatious. I don't know. That's like the way that I would picture like a godly woman interacting with a godly man is not too flirtatious. Uh, honestly, guys do like like obviously being flirted with. But um, if your ultimate goal is to marry this person or to get him to like you, um, in a godly standpoint, then it's going to get the wrong, wrong signals. Exactly. Okay, next question is, while single and serving, how can you stay focused on God and not think too much about marriage? That's a really good question. This is a very good question, and I know a lot of people struggle with this, and uh, I do get a lot of questions being married now. People can ask me, like, how did you know uh, when the right time was? How did you know who it was with? Uh, stuff like that, and I can say from my personal experience, and I hope that it can help somebody out there, especially the person that asked this question. I was serving for about two and a half years um, on the mission field before. Full yeah, full time before I, I actually met Claudia and uh, everything happened with us getting married and stuff. Um, but in that time period, obviously thoughts came, and like phases came where I was like, man, I need to get married. Like I want to find the one. And like, obviously I always had my eyes open, but um, I saw that when that was my main focus, like I would completely lose focus of ministry. I would lose focus of what God is um, actually calling me to do in my ministry, in, my, in the mission field that I was serving in. And so like my personal advice would have to be is in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, it says, Seek first the kingdom of heaven and all these things will be added unto you. This was a verse that really stuck with me and really helped me to focus on ministry, to focus on 
uh, the work that God called me to do in that time period and to, to just serve the Lord and to know that God is going to provide the one at the right time, at the right place, right. Um, all these things. It will just kind of like be put together because God sees your serving heart. He, he sees that you're, you're dedicating your time to, to serve Him and so He's not going to be like, uh, you know, there's no time to give him a blessing to a marriage partner or whatever. it will kind of just be like, you know, this is the right time and um, to just make make that your focus is serving the Lord and then these things, it will come one after another. But at the same time, always when you pray, always have this at the back of your mind and, and pray for, for your future husband or wife. And um, it is a good but thing to pray for. Like but don't make that like your main focus. Yeah. Don't make that your main focus because yeah. you're just going to get distracted. You're going to start looking left and right. You're going to start... Um, thinking that she's the one, he's the one. So it's, yeah. it's just better to pray about it, but don't make that main, your main focus. Make your main focus is seeking the kingdom of heaven. And, and I promise you these things will be added unto you. So something that also I know helped me while I was serving um, was keeping your eyes open but keeping your heart closed, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. So your eyes are obviously open. You see, you know, guys or you see girls. Um, but keeping your heart closed, not opening your heart to them. I know a lot of times us girls, like a guy looks at us a certain way and we're like, oh my gosh, he looked at me, he likes me, we're gonna get married. Like your mind jumps all these places and you're opening your heart to that person. But my advice would be, especially while you're serving, while you're serving, don't open your heart to just anybody because um, you will get heartbroken and that will affect your ministry. So, um, so next question is advice for first year of marriage. Um, I can say for myself personally was unity that unity that um, we had to have amongst ourselves and and in prayer as well to kind of like put before the Lord the decisions we want to make the decisions we had to make that will affect our future um, it was just it was really beneficial to be united yeah. to be like uh, in sync with each other and kind of um, like same mind same goal, exactly same focus. exactly because yeah. then you know where you're headed you know that you're going together and I'm not going ahead of her and she's kind of like oh, lagging on behind. Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> trying to figure out what I'm doing. So unity is the main thing. And that's going to help actually the following years of your marriage is just yeah. getting more and more united. And that way you can be more um, effective even in, in your calling and in your ministry, wherever you are, is being united with your with your spouse. Something that I would advise anyone in their first year of marriage, and we did this, we kind of stopped doing this after our first year of marriage just because we got busy with ministry and with everything. But every month we used to sit down and we would have like story time, we would call it, and go throughout the month and talk about things that maybe he did that hurt me or that I did that hurt him or things that I saw that he's doing and I don't like it or so things that he's doing and I really like it and I want him to continue doing those things or vice versa. So we just sat down and just talked about our relationship and talked about our marriage. Mm -hmm. We would do that every single month. I would advise that to anybody to do that because that, like I said at the other question, it, it makes you know him open up to you and you open up to him and that unifies you guys and you guys are able to work through problems together so it's not that something's hurting you and you're too scared to talk to him no you need to have that communication you need to be open with one another because then your marriage is never going to prosper your marriage is never going to grow if you're not willing to sit down to talk to your partner about what you're going through and how that's affecting you personally next question is um when kids so i don't know if this says like when are we gonna have kids or when should you guys have kids? I don't understand this question. You should have kids whenever God gives them, whenever you're ready for children, when you're ready to have a family. Yeah, it's a big responsibility. And so it's good to be ready. It's good to pray about it and um, to just allow the Lord honestly to, to direct you in this step because it is a huge step and uh, you're giving birth to a new life. You're discipling a new person. Children are a blessing and um, we can't wait to be parents, but um, we are allowing God to direct us in that. We're allowing yeah. God to um, pick the right time to bless us with the child. So, um, yeah. Next question. How can we integrate God more in our relationship? I'll let you go first. Um, I would say just like do things together, serve together, um, you know, in your church, maybe sing a song together. If you guys don't like to sing, um, get together and pray or read the Bible together, study the Bible together or have the same devotion on the Bible app and you guys like, can meet up and talk about it. Um, challenge each other like to grow spiritually. Challenge each other to um, read more and pray more and, you know, I don't know. 
Yeah. Honestly, she kind of took my answer. It's kind of just doing <laughs> things together. Um, that's kind of what united us even before we got married or even before we got engaged. It was kind of we were serving together. And I saw how like I could see my future with her, if that makes sense. Like you can see your future with somebody just by serving, uh, serving God together, whether it's at the homeless outreach, whether it's at church, whether it's at Sunday school, whatever it is, yeah. you know, there's there's uh, endless places where you can serve together. And it's endless kinda, opportunities for you yeah, to serve. Yeah, so definitely serving together will unite you guys and will um, put God actually at the center of your relationship. So the last question is, how to cope with the age difference more than a six-year gap? To be honest, uh, I know a lot of people ask, like, you know, how many years is too many years? How many yeah. years is, like, I don't know, just so many different questions. But if you know that this is from God, if you know that the, the person that you are speaking to, yes, there's going to be an age difference. Yes, there's going to be um, differences. Hardships that come with that. And there's going to, yeah, there's going to be differences, different generation, different upbringing, stuff like that. Um, but definitely consider the long term because, you know, as you're young, like the age difference doesn't seem too, too big and, you know, you're still young, you still look young. But unfortunately, like as you age, um, it will show uh, the yeah. difference later on in life. And so make sure you, you count that cost. Um, and, and if you love each other, then that won't matter. But do do remember that when you when you get older, um, it's going to play a big part in in your marriage or in relationship, you know, if you love each other and if you know it's from the Lord, like I said, then um, then it shouldn't really matter how many years and stuff like that. It's kind of more like that love will keep you together no matter how old they get, no matter how how much they their appearance changes, stuff like that. It will be, um, Christ will still be the center of it and that love will not be broken based off of age, you know, so. Yeah, also like find things in common. Mm -hmm. Find things that interest the both of you that can, you know, unite you guys. Find different hobbies that you guys can do together. Despite the age gap, um, that will definitely like bring you guys together, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you guys for your guys' questions. Um, it was really cool to be able to answer them and kind of evaluate even our marriage through them and kind of just see um, what God's taught us through through our marriage and how much more we still have to learn. Yeah. But uh, it is a journey. Uh, you have to start it sometime. You never will be ready for a relationship or marriage because uh, things come up that you're not ready for. But it is a part of life and you work through through them together. And especially if you have the Lord in your life and you have Jesus as, as the one that brought you guys together, then you always go back to Him. Um, with your problems, with your struggles, with um, any questions that you have regarding marriage. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video.